This is the Canon Ixus 2, known in some geographies as the Canon Elf 2. I bought it in 1996, just after it was released. It was an impulse buy. At the time, I was using a Canon A1 35mm camera. I bought the small Ixus to take out in the evening or other times when I didn't want to carry around a bulky SLR system. In most respects, it's a standard point and shoot camera. But what makes it interesting is the APS film format that it uses. In 1996, there were already digital cameras on the market, such as the Apple QuickTake. They were expensive, but the writing was already on the wall for the future of photography. The APS format was a last gasp attempt to add some additional technology to photographic film. It has some nice features, which I will talk about later in the video, but it has one huge fatal flaw. Before that, Let's take a quick look at the Canon Ixus 2. It's tiny, which I really like, and this resulted in many comments about spy cameras. I've always liked small cameras, and I've been using the Canon EOS M system since 2013. The lens is non-interchangeable and zooms from 23 to 46 mm There's a built-in flash, which can be set to always on, always off, or auto. The flash also has a red eye reduction mode and a slow sync mode for nighttime photography where a slow shutter speed is selected to expose the background while the foreground subject is illuminated by the flash. There is also a built-in self-timer. These features are all standard for point and shoot cameras, but this APS camera also has a few extra features. Firstly, this switch here, which is used to select one of three aspect ratios, I'll talk about these later. The date that the photo was taken can be printed on the back or on both sides of the photo. In addition, one of five fixed titles can be printed on the back of the photo. Now let's take a look at the film. This is a roll of APS film, and this is a roll of standard 35 millimeter film. One big advantage with APS is that it's very easy to load just insert the canister into the camera. Later film cameras, such as my Canon T90, loaded and rewound film automatically. But with early cameras, such as my Canon A1, loading the film could be quite fiddly. Another big advantage is that APS film can be unloaded and reloaded mid-roll. This is possible with 35mm film, but again, it's quite a fiddly operation. On the APS canister, the status of the film is displayed on the outside. You can see by these four numbers here. Number one means unexposed, two means partially exposed, three means fully exposed, and four means processed. Unlike 35mm film, which is returned after processing as strips of film, processed APS film is returned still in the film canister. APS film which is an abbreviation for Advanced Photo System, was mainly used in point and shoot cameras, but some manufacturers also made SLR cameras that use the same format. Now let's talk more about some advantages of APS. Unlike 35mm film, additional data is recorded on the film at the time of shooting. This includes the date and time the photo was taken, the aspect ratio, and the exposure information to assist with processing. In addition, the print quantity and whether a pre-selected title is printed on the back of the photo can also be specified. This data is stored on the film in one of two ways, either optically or magnetically, depending on the camera model. On this particular film, the data has been recorded optically. After the film was sent to a lab for processing, the customer will receive a set of prints, the exposed film still in the canister, and an index print consisting of the thumbnails for every shot on one print. This made it very easy to order more prints if required. On this image, you can see the pre-configured titles that were available. APS film was available from ISO 100 to 800, and the number of frames per roll was 15, 25, or 40. What I've covered so far illustrates the benefits of APS film, but now I have to talk about the fatal flaw. As you can see in this image, APS film is a lot smaller than 35mm film, but it actually gets worse than that. The H aspect ratio, 16 to 9, 
is only 58% of the area of a 35mm frame. But to make things worse, the classic aspect ratio, 3 to 2, and the panoramic ratio, 3 to 1, are crops of the H ratio. For some photographers, 35mm film didn't offer enough resolution, and they preferred medium or large format. APS, at its largest resolution, is only just bigger than half of a 35mm frame, and this is very detrimental to image quality. Unfortunately, to make things worse, the sample images I have are from a film that was left in my camera and is around 28 years old, thus the image quality is very bad. APS film stopped being manufactured in 2011, therefore any film that you buy now will be at least 13 years old and old film will have reduced image quality. The user manual for the Ixus tells users that colour reproduction will be adversely affected if the film is left in the camera for a long time and recommends prompt processing of exposed film. 35mm film photography still has a big fan base and 35mm film is still manufactured. APS film was fatally flawed and died out soon after it was introduced. With APS film production ending in 2011, film is now quite difficult to find. My local processing lab was able to process this roll and still sees the occasional roll of APS, but there is very little demand. It was an interesting episode in the history of photography, but now the format is virtually extinct.